Hallelujah. Welcome, friends, to another evening Bible studies, Bible class online. I want to bless God for you. I want to bless God for your support, your faithfulness. And um, as we have been doing this program now for nearly going a year, we want to thank God for His mercies and His grace. Whatever I do, whatever I say, we endeavor not to enunciate our own views. We always want to hear from the Lord. What is God saying? And as God has directed, directed me to do this ministry, I really want to thank God for the persons I've been supporting over the years, sorry, over the year, and to pray that you be blessed continually. And I pray that our my presentation to you has been blessed in your heart. I'm going to ask you to ensure that you share these classes with unsaved friends, neighbors, far and wide, send it across the world, and someone will hear what God has laid on my heart. I want to let you know that your support means a lot because had it not been for your support persons over the over the time that i thought would have said you know a word of encouragement i wanted a word from them but you know what we are doing this not because of um accolades or praises god has laid this ministry on my heart and so i share with you i pray that you will bless again this evening as we share another word from the word of god i want to thank um my son tavari who does the technical aspect each evening my dear wife sandra who listen to the quality and sure that it is in line with what needs what what is acceptable and so I bless God. Thank God for them. Thank God for you all. And my own co-worker, Sharon. You are, I'm seeing you. God bless you. And all the brethren from, from overseas and from Jamaica. God bless you. Pray that you are blessed tonight. I want to invite you at this time to bow your heads while I share a word. While I ask God to direct my thoughts. And to inspire this program in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this evening. Lord, we know that whatever we do, Lord, is not because of personal praises. But Lord, it's a direct word from you, Lord, to share this word with the nation, with the world. And so we thank you for Facebook. Thank you for the supporters, Lord, who come on each evening. We pray, Lord, that this will start a revolution. Hallelujah. We start, Lord God, a revival across the world. And people will be saved. Come to know you, Lord, as your personal Savior. Bless, deliver, sanctify, heal. Hallelujah. Ah, glory to God and inspire now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 My theme this evening is trim your lamp. And I'll be going through the scriptures, but a little later on. But as to lay the foundation as we go, as we expound the word of God, then we will um, as always back it up with the word of God. And one of the things I endeavor to do is not to bring my own interpretation to the word of god and start a new doctrine or a new teaching i never at all times to read what the word of god is saying and exegete the word of god as is there in the word amen and so you're not hear from me personal views and when, when i'm giving personal views i let you know but i want the word of god to be number one and the whole 
ethos of the word, the, 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 the whole symbol of the word, amen, the whole context of the word, you must get it, amen. So we're going to look tonight at trimming, trim your lamb. And so the question I ask is, what is a lamb? And is a lamb important? What is a lamb? Is it important? A lamp is a device for giving light. Straight up. Every lamp is designed to give a light. There are different types of lamp. You have electric lamp. As I have one trained on me now. We have gas lamp. And we have kerosene lamp. And how many people know of the old time in Jamaica when the lamp shade was home sweet home. <laughs> Those are the days. So there are different types of lamps. A lamp though is very useful whenever there is going to be a potential for darkness. Let me say it again. A lamp is useful whenever there is a potential for darkness. Because a lamp, the light it gives is intended to dispel darkness. Amen. A lamp is never announced when you're planning a function. I have never heard a function being advertised and I hear them say, and lamps should be there and light should be there. No. In that first spell you don't put in, lamp will be provided to give some light. Light is always expected to be at every function you keep. In St. Matthew 5, verse 14 to 16, the Lord Jesus emphasized the importance of light. And so we saw in St. Matthew 5 where Jesus was very clear when he was referring to light, showing the importance of light. Amen. And so he said, you are the light of the world. He's talking to the, the believer now. He's talking to people now who have accepted the Lord as your Savior. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Amen. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel or under a covering. But you put light on a candlestick. That's another type of light. Um, that device that gives light. And it giveth light unto all that are in the house. So Jesus said now, speaking, he said, let your light so shine <laughs> before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So therefore, Jesus was very clear when he, ex when he expounded the importance of light. And so a lamp, though not announced, it is important that everywhere you go, there must be some form of light. If any at all, there's going to be a potential for darkness. We're going to explain that later on. The possible, the possible absence, though, of a lamp, lamp's light will be, will be a contingency that will be provided for. Let me say it again. If any at all, a lamp's light will be absent, somebody has to provide a contingency to, to fill in for that light. And so the promoter of that function, the planner of that function, will be asked to provide a backup source of light so that if the lamp malfunctions, light will be there. You know why? It is expected that light is always present anywhere there is a potential for darkness. And I want the believer and the people of God who are listening to this program understand what I'm saying. Light is always expected wherever there's a potential for darkness. And that is why I say to us, the world is a dark place. The world is a dark place. 
And so the believer, Jesus said, you are the light of the world. If you have noticed over the past couple of years, people no longer wanted to preach about sin. Because they say, if you say to somebody, if you sin, you're going to die. They say you're speaking evil into their lives and you're speaking a curse over them. Hello, wake up. The word of God said, the soul that sinneth shall surely die. Word of God says, amen, the wages of sin is death. And so these days, people don't want to preach sin anymore. You must tell them that you have some weaknesses. It's not a weakness, friend. It is called sin. God is calling us out of sin. And the believer is expected to speak. The preacher must preach against sin and unrighteousness. Somebody said that means, that means he's perfect. Oh no. Perfect or not, believe, preacher man. You must preach the word of God. And so lamp, lamp, light people. You will only make news and talked about if you did not show or you did not do your expected job. That is the only time you hear about light. Because I've never heard a news item on the radio station or any other popular station say um, light was at the function today so we are in a good time. No, light is never mentioned. However, if the town should plunge into darkness, you will hear that the light went off and the place was in darkness. What is that message being sent to us? Believers, children of God, it is saying to us that we must always be in a position to be light to the world. We must always be in a position where the world can just automatically on autopilot depend on us to bring light. The world is a dark place filled with all manner of sin and unrighteousness. These are the days when what used to be wrong is now called right. And what is right is called wrong. Because the devil has messed up people's mind. And they no longer want to hear the word of God. Which is a light. Which brings light to the world. But thank God. Amen. That there are people who are not too careful about popularity. Because if it was popularity. This teacher of Bible class would stop a long time. Because many people who could give you a word of encouragement that you look to. To say, teacher, good job. No, they will not call you. They will not encourage you. They sit down and they, they find a pick the message apart to see where you went wrong and where they could do better than you. But I'm saying to us, that's not what the world is looking for. The world is looking for us to keep our light shining. Jesus said, you are a city that is on a hill and you cannot be hidden. Amen. For our discussion tonight though, we are going to use the lamp that is lighted by the use of oil. And so I won't be using any electric lamp. I won't be using any um, gas lamp. I want to go back to a lamp that is used with oil. Now, that's not popular today because most of our lights are either battery operated or um, or electricity operated or um, helium operated, something like that. But even if you can't um, associate with oil, I want to teach you tonight about the importance of oil in a lamp. All right. Lamp has no use. Lamp has no relevance or importance if you have it and there is no oil in it. Lamp has no use or relevance if you have the lamp and no oil. You remember the story of the five foolish virgins? 
They had the lamp. Every one of them had a lamp. And their own lamp. They had wicks in the lamp. And the wick is what your light. And it dips into the oil. And the oil seeps up in that wick. And keeps it lubricated. So the oil. So the light at the top can keep going. The five foolish virgins. They had lamp. Glory to God. They had wicks in the lamp. But what they ran out of was oil for the lamp. And the moment the oil went out, then they were plunged into darkness. They were plunged into darkness. They had the lamp, but no oil. Oh, glory. The bridegroom, therefore, when he came, he was not in a position to identify them as he had to decipher in the darkness who was his potential bride or who was a guest to his wedding and so even though they were there the groom could not see them or worse the groom had to make sure that whichever woman he invited into his chamber was not a total stranger do you see the importance of light your light must always shine Today we have so many prophets and preachers. And they are, they, they, if you don't have the oil, hallelujah, and the light of God in you and around you, they will fool you and you'll bring them in and believe that they are one of us. But Jesus said they are wolf in sheep's clothing. They are, they are, they are, they are trashing around in the darkness. And you need the light of God in your spirit, in you, to shine on them. For you to recognize that they are not cheap. Lick a red ride, Robin riding out the hours get it wrong. She was going to grandma's house, and a wolf ran ahead of her and, and put on grandma's nightgown, put on grandma's maybe tired, and jumped in the bed. And when the little girl came in, she said, Grandma, and the wolf chose to answer her. Glory to God. But the light of God came on in her mind. She said, you have on grandma's clothes. You have on grandma's tired. But your voice is not grandma's own. Neither is your face looking so like right, grandma. The only way she could see that is because light was in the house. The Bible said in the last days we shall have false prophets teaching people with itching ears. In other words, you only want to hear what is convenient to you. You don't want to hear that you must come out from sin and among unrighteousness and be separated. All you want to say, I'm weak so the Lord understands. In heaven, the Bible said, there shall be no sin or unrighteousness in heaven. So no matter how weak you think you are, you better get strong before the rapture comes. Because no sin will be in heaven. Can you imagine you spend life down here on earth with murderers, rapists, and you go heaven go see them again? Oh no, it will not be heaven. But glory to God. Hallelujah. When we get to heaven, all sin and unrighteousness will be left on the earth. Our light must shine oh glory to god what is the relevance of the oil now that is in that lamp what relevance is that oil the oil used in the lamp that was in the temple when eli was a priest is a type is a type of the holy spirit in our life today the oil is a type of the holy spirit in our life today Eli or Aaron or or um or or uh, any of the priests of Levi under the old covenant could never could never could not present themselves to minister unless that priest was anointed with oil and was consecrated. Let's look at Leviticus eight, verse one and two, and see what Moses did. Amen. With Aaron, Aaron and his sons. Bible said, 
Leviticus 8 verse 1 and 2 and the Lord spake unto Moses saying take Aaron and his sons with him and the garments and the anointing oil and a bullock for the sin offering and two rams and a basket of unleavened bread in other words one of the things that was present when Moses was going to anoint Aaron and his sons to be the priests of Israel they had to have the anointing oil amen because this oil is what keeps the lamp light shining oh glory to God the Bible said after they had washed with water Moses would make sure that they got a they would clean outside somebody said you're judging me because you're, you're judging me by what you see me doing but the Bible said out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speak you can't speak righteousness if in you is unrighteousness the Bible said no well can spring forth sweet and bitter water at the same time amen the Bible said by your fruit you shall know them and so somebody said don't judge me what you see me do come on now I can only judge about what I see because I can't see your heart only God sees your heart so I can only see the fruit that come off your tree God is the one who help you to grow the fruit but I can only pick up what I see coming off your tree and if coming off your tree is sin and unrighteousness then I know inside is sin and unrighteousness so Moses washed them he washed them along with the vessels and to be sanctified by the application amen of water and Leviticus 8 verse 20 to 12 now that Moses brought the oil the Bible said and Moses took the anointing oil and anointed the tabernacle glory to God if a tabernacle is going to be a clean place it has to have the oil the anointing of the Spirit of God amen in that place and the um, Bible said and Moses took the anointed oil anointed the tabernacle and all that was therein everything in the tabernacle was anointed and sanctified them it tells me therefore that if you are going to be sanctified you need to be sanctified by the Holy Spirit and he sprinkled there upon the brazen altar seven times what did he sprinkle upon it the oil the anointing and anointed the altar and all the vessels were anointed both the lava listen to this and his foot my God the Bible said the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord do you realize you wanted to kill that Christian a long time you go to Obe man at you go St. Thomas, you go Veer, you go Portland, you go Maroon Town, and he's still living and try. You know why? Because God has anointed his foot. So anywhere he walks, God Almighty is he's walking the footsteps of God. You can't kill him. Save the money for your retirement, your devil. Because but God and Moses anointed their foot to do what? To sanctify them. To sanctify means to make them worthy to come into the presence of God and to and to operate in the presence of God met a young met a preacher once and he said he's a bad word cousin preacher how can you hallelujah be a, be a servant of God and all that proceeds out of your mouth is corruption and nastiness and filth and you tell me you are an anointed servant of God the devil is a liar and so is his whole family the Holy Spirit is that oil, amen, that, that, that sanctifies us. Glory to God. The anointing that Moses did upon Aaron's, I mean, sons, was a practical, physical anointing. Let me say that again. The anointing that Moses did upon Aaron and his sons was a practical physical anointing it was done by an actual physical individual who was that 
God's servant Moses. Let me deal with you today. You tell me that nobody anointed you. You just get up and go and you're a bishop. Hello? Before Moses sent out Aaron and his boys, they had to get the anointing of God over them. Before Moses went to Egypt, God met him at the, at the bush. Amen. And said, take off your shoes from off your feet. For the place where you're standing is holy ground. It's sanctified. Many of us today have our various concepts of how God operates. And so we put God in a box to suit what we like. But God is, is too big to be held in a box. Oh, glory to God. He's too big to be, to be our personal um, emissary. God is, he rules the world, but he also sees you in your corner. Hallelujah. That's the God we serve. And you can't poison his mind against me. You could pray until your back, your belly touch your back. You could fast until your teeth drop out. You can never impress on God to mash up his servant because God anoints his servant to be used by God. Oh, glory to God. When Samuel went to, to amen, to, 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 that, uh, to anoint, that um, to pray before, amen, that battle, Saul, the king, went ahead and did what the priest Samuel should do. Hallelujah. When Samuel came, Samuel said, How dare you? Amen. Touch the anointed oil king. Amen. That's my job because God has anointed me to do that job. Amen. And, and hallelujah. At the time when, when Saul went further and disobeyed, amen, the command of God to kill all the Amalekites because he never liked what he felt. He felt he could do his own thing. Amen. Samuel said, God shall take the kingdom from you and turned away from Saul. And Saul held on to Samuel's garment and ripped it. And Samuel said, the same way you ripped my garment, God shall rip the kingdom from you. If it was today, 2021, you would hear Saul saying, the man of God is speaking destruction over his life. And yes, you must speak it over your life. You may deserve it in the name of Jesus. The anointing was done by an actual man, Moses. The environment in which a priest operated, the vessels, and the tabernacle itself had to be anointed. And somebody said, I can keep a prayer meeting in a in a in a um in a in a place where prostitutes are. I can keep a prayer meeting in a bar. You're gonna keep it in a bar. If, if, if not you drinking with them, I'm talking about you, 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 you'll be like Jesus. They call Jesus wine bibber, but he never drank no wine to become drunk. They call him um, all sorts of names because they saw it as a way of putting him down. But the servant of God, everything around you must be anointed. The servant of God cannot operate in an environment that is not consecrated. Every part represents aspects of the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. Before, as a matter of fact, Jesus himself, before he even read the first lesson in the temple, before he opened the Torah, before he opened the Pentateuch, the first thing Jesus did was to cleanse the environment. So the Bible said he grabbed um, some cords and some whips and he walked over to the money changers. He walked over to the turkle dove sellers. He walked over to those who were desecrating the temple and were doing all manner of robbery in the temple. And the Bible said, what did Jesus do? He beat them out of it. Can you imagine Jesus beating those big men out of a temple, kicking over their money tables? He, was, he, had a, he, had, he had a righteous anger and he pushed it over. And what did he say? My father's house shall be a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. In other words, no light is shining in this house. 
This is a house of darkness. I'm going to say to somebody this evening that if any at all you are going to be pleasing God, you've got to do so after being consecrated. What does that mean to be washed? Amen. Somebody said, I'm not yet baptized, but I am a, I'm a bishop. Hello. Repent. Repent and be baptized. You've got to repent and then you are baptized. You can't baptize and then you repent. Amen. Repentance means you are a dead man. Not physically, no. Spiritually, you are dead to sin. And repentance means I know that you are dead. I'm taking you to the pool, which is representing a grave, but that pool has in it water. So we are putting you, the dead man, dead to sin, in the watery grave and burying the old man and his deeds. And the Bible said, when we put you under baptizo, amen, baptizo means, amen, to immerse you under the water, we have buried the old man, glory to God. And the Bible said, when we take you back out of the water, you rise to walk in new life, in newness of life. You rise now, you went down a murderer, glory to God. And when we bring you back up, Shanda, the murder has been left in that grave. So now you walk in a new life. Jesus chased on the money table, chambers. Said, I made my place a den of thieves. Anywhere you're going to operate with the oil of the anointing, it must be that it's going to bring light to that dark place. Believers, we are called to be light. You are, Jesus said, you are the light of the world. Jesus said, you're a city that is set on a hill. Jesus said, because your light is up there, you cannot be hid. Amen. And nobody can put you under a bushel. Oh, glory to God, because you are showing light. The lampstand, the lampstand that was in the tabernacle, in the tabernacle, in the holy place, because you had the outer court, you had the inner court, you had the brazen lava, amen, you had the, 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 the walk into the holy place where there was a showbread, in other words, the, 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 the bread that the priests eat, amen, and, uh, and, and those that were ministering, amen, you had a lampstand, amen, made out of made out of gold was beaten amen into 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 a lampstand amen that lampstand the anointing was patterned off the lampstand in other words hear the word of god said in isaiah 11 isaiah 11 verse 2 and the spirit of the lord shall rest upon him upon G, the, the coming lamb the spirit of wisdom and understanding the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, when the Holy Spirit comes into you, you are, be, after being anointed by the Holy Spirit, hallelujah, you will show what? Wisdom understanding counsel and might the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the lord wisdom will come upon you understanding will come upon you counsel and might will be your operating principle the spirit of knowledge will come over you and the fear of the lord will be in you because the word of god said the fear of god is the beginning of wisdom so if you're going to have wisdom you've got to learn to fear God and fearing God don't mean you're afraid of God fearing God means you reverence him you give him praise and glory and honor adoration your life that you live is a life of light so people can see your light and the moment they see your light, 
it, they're going to glorify who? Your Father up in heaven. So the light that comes out of you, having been filled with the oil of the Holy Spirit, it will cause people to not big you up, although that happens sometimes, but it will cause them to reflect on God and to glorify God. That's what the importance of the oil in you, the light you give, it gives God praise and it gives God glory. Somebody shout hallelujah. And so 1 Corinthians 8, amen, and verse, sorry, 12 and verse 8 to 10 says, and this is showing up what the, the, what the Holy Spirit gives. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same spirit by the same oil being poured into you amen to another faith by the same oil the same spirit is poured into you to another the gifts of healing by the same spirit to another the working of miracles to another prophecy to another discerning of spirit to another diverse kinds of tongues to another interpretation of tongues let me just spend one minute on that. Because many times, because you have a prophetic ministry, and I have a ministry of word of knowledge, you feel that you're bigger than me. Stop. God chooses to give gifts for the glory of God, for the, for the perfecting of the saints, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Everybody couldn't be prophets. So don't believe because you are a prophet, then you are better than the man who has working of miracles or the gift of healing. All of them come together like a body, the eye, the hand, the ear, the foot. All of them come together, amen, to make the body function. So prophet, um, word of wisdom, word of knowledge, come together. Healing, miracles, come together so that it, the church will benefit, the world will benefit. So while prophet is over here, the word of wisdom is over here, the word of knowledge is over there, and people are being perfected right around. Just one more minute. Just like you plant um, a, a, a bunch of um, cabbage. While you plant, you don't always pour water sometimes you might have to um, use a little insecticide sometimes you might have to um, use um, some some other things to help it to grow all of these come together why because there are some customers waiting for the cabbage if you put pure water and no other things then you're gonna have problems hallelujah and so all of this come together in unity the unity of the spirit for the, in the bond of peace for the edifying of the body of Christ. Let me move on. So therefore, there must always be light. We call it perpetual light. The light must always be burning in the temple. The light must always be burning in you. Then the word of God says, your body is the temple of the living God. So therefore, your body is a temple. Amen. And so the Spirit of God don't dwell in dog, cow, cat, fowl, guinea pig. The Word of the Spirit of God dwells in human, in your body. Oh, glory to God. So God wants you now to keep your body so clean so that He can dwell within you. Glory to God. The golden lampstand was a foreshadow, a type of Jesus Christ who was to come. When he came, he would bring light to the world that was in darkness. When the lamp was lit in the temple, in the holy place, it was no longer dark because those seven buds would give seven light. Amen. To make the place bright. Glory to God. We want some light in Jamaica. We want more light in the world. We want more light in Jamaica. Because wherever there is light, darkness 
has to dispel. Let me encourage our policemen and soldiers. Let me encourage the government of Jamaica. Let me encourage opposition. Oh, glory to God. If we're going to have the victory, call them Ashanda. If we're going to have, amen, the victory over crime and violence, let's get some light in God. Let's get some light in the people. Let's tell them that Jesus said, amen, come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. Let's tell some more people, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Then Jesus spake unto them in St. John 8 verse 12. He said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. My God, Jesus speaking in St. John 8 verse 12. Let's read it again. Then spake Jesus unto them saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Glory to God. Let's get some oil in us, my God. Let's get some oil in our spirit. Hallelujah. And let us dispel the darkness in our community, in our lanes. Our girls and boys are being kidnapped. My God. The, the, the statistic says over 230 of our children have not been found and climbing more and more because somebody decided to grab them, snatch them and ship them off across the world. My God, to rape them, to work them, to kill them. But in the name of Jesus, I speak upon that trailer that's going on on the ocean tomorrow. Hallelujah, that ship break down in Jesus' name that ship hallelujah that is going to be carrying those girls and those young children i command the fire of god to burn through that engine and may that child be rescued in the name of jesus perpetual light listen to jesus speaking to his disciples in saint matthew 5 verse 14 and 15 and i read it Jesus said, Disciples, you are the light of the world. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but you put your candle on a candlestick. Let your light so shine before men, therefore, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. When Eli the priest was getting old, and could no longer keep the light on in the temple. It became the responsibility of young Samuel to light the lamp and to keep the light on in the temple. The old, the eyes of the old priest began to wax dim and he could not see. I want to talk to parents who are saying your children are too young to serve the Lord. Yet, the men and the gangs are taking a young seven-year-old and ten-year-old and push them through like a slot in the window and tell them to open the shop door and let her come in. So they are not too old to commit robberies. But they are, too, they are not too young, sorry, to commit robberies. Yet they are too young to serve the Lord. What kind of physics is that? What kind of biology is that? What kind of rubbish is that? When a child gives his life to Jesus, hear Jesus, when the disciples were running away the children from him, Jesus said, suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not, don't stop them, for they represent the kingdom of God. When Israel crossed the desert, there was light. Exodus 13 verse 21 to 22 and the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead them by the way and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light to go by night by day and night he took not away the pillar of cloud by day 
nor the pillar of fire by night from before the people because he knew that any time he removes light darkness and whenever there's darkness people cannot operate efficiently in darkness word of god says they that walk it in darkness shall stumble hear the word today the church you believers we the church are expected to provide light to the world and also to be constantly experiencing the anointing of the holy spirit we the church is being called upon to provide light to the world and to constantly let the world experience the anointing of the holy spirit what are some of the effects of darkness on the church whenever the priest of god began to experience darkness in his life it always opened the door to cause sin and destruction to come in when eli's eyes became dim his sons went into adultery his sons went to idolatry they became the sons of belial they knew not the lord robbery and desecration became the order of the day let's hear a little from the word of god first samuel 2 verse 14 it says and it's took this is the, the, the samuel's boys now sorry eli's boys and he struck it into the pan or kettle or cauldron that is the the fork three feet fork and brought to the priest whatever it brought to the priest took for himself so they did in shiloh unto the israelites that came thither also before they burnt the fat the priest servant came and said to the men that sacrificed give flesh to roast for the priests for you not have sodden flesh of thee but raw and if any man said unto him let them not fail to burn the fat presently and then take as much as I so desire it then he would answer him nay but thou shalt give it me now and if not I will take it by force in other words the priests became the oppressors pastor people of God servants of God God is expecting us to church to ease the burden of the world Word of God says, for he came, amen, to set at liberty, Jesus, to set at liberty them that are in captivity, and to lead man out of bondage and to break the yokes. That's why Jesus came. The importance, therefore, of the Holy Spirit in the church cannot be overemphasized. And again, we say the Holy Spirit represents that oil that was in the lamp in the time of the old amen today that oil is a type of the holy spirit in the church today the holy spirit of the holy ghost guarantees that the enemies of the gospel are subdued and conquered the holy spirit guarantees that the enemies of the gospel are subdued and conquered simon the sorcerer in Acts 8 verse 18 to 24 when Peter and John laid hands on the people in Samaria the Holy Ghost came then Simon the Hoberman realized that the power he had could not be compared to the power of the Holy Ghost oh can I remind somebody today who is afraid because people say they're gonna obey you can I remind you that the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church and you are the church the gates of hell shall not prevail cannot overcome you my god you shall walk on serpents you shall um, if you're eating a deadly thing it shall not harm you you shall tread upon scorpions and serpents amen amen i'm not telling you to take up a scorpion on the ground but i'm talking to scorpions of this world amen those that are 
coming out to destroy your life. We trample them under the blood of Jesus. We step on them, the word of God says. Satan you shall bruise the heel of the serp of the son, but he shall mash up your head. Oh, glory to God. Can I remind a child of God that when God call you and pour his oil in you, the Holy Spirit, the, the light you shine, it not only give light, but it also burn. Lord Jesus, in my time, amen, when we saw the, the, the lamp in our homes, uh, amen, sometimes we'd have a shade on it, and a little bat would fly near the light, and, it sh and burn it up, because light, fire not only give light, but it also destroy, amen, amen, other rubbish, and all things that have come to harm you. Elimas the sorcerer, in Acts 13, verse 8 to 11, he was trying to prevent Amen. The, 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 his master from hearing the word of God. And Paul, under the anointing of the Holy Ghost, said, You shall be blind for a season, Elimas. And he was blind for a season. At the gate, beautiful, Acts 3, verse 1 to 9, Peter and John said, Silver and gold have I none. But let's, let's see the high pouring out now. But such as I have, give I thee. Let's see light coming in my life now. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. My God. The Bible said immediately reach out, touch him. And his ankle bone receives strength. That's the power of the Holy Ghost. Peter and John before the Sanhedrin in Acts 4 verse 19 to 20 when the signing when the men of the courthouse said peter you must you can't preach in jesus name again peter said hey man we ought to obey god rather than men this no anointing coming out of god's people amen amen when when paul amen came up came across out of the storm at Euroclidon and reached Rome and he, he got some sticks and put together and made a fire and when the fire got hot and the viper in the wood the viper came out and grabbed onto Saul to Paul's hand and they expected Paul to die Paul just under the power of the Holy Ghost hallelujah fill the Holy Ghost he just shake off the viper in the fire and he lived I want to tell God's people today the same testimony of Saul of Paul you can have the same testimony today if I should ever give you some testimony that God has used hallelujah his servant to defy demonic forces to cast out demons out of men and women hallelujah because in us is light and when demons see light my God he has to run for the darkness hallelujah because his deeds are evil how do we get this light now? How do we get this source of empowerment? How do we receive this oil? Acts 1 verse 8, the word of God says, But ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you. You shall be witnesses. When Jesus rose from the dead, he declared without any contradiction, he said, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth god almighty you need an encounter you need an encounter you need an encounter oh glory to god you, listen to this you need an, an an attachment to the lord you need to be grafted into him to repent and a baptism and in filling up the holy spirit you need to surrender to jesus christ and when you surrender to him in other words, when you stand in front of a police when I put up your hands, you are saying, look in my hand. I don't have anything to destroy you. I don't have anything to hurt you. My hands are empty. My hands are clean. Look, my hands are clean. So I stick my hand up. When you surrender to Jesus in repentance, you say, Lord, I hold back nothing. I come to you as I am. Wash me now. When you are surrendered to Jesus, you connect to the source of power. Jesus Christ is the power source. Oh, glory. And in closing, how is the anointing manifested? You manifest this anointing 
through his power that he gives you. Be a Christian in how you live, in how you speak, in how you socialize, in how you fellowship. Christian, let the beauty of Jesus Christ be seen in you. Love, peace, joy, long-suffering, meekness, temperance, faith. Exercise your faith. Ask and expect. Seek and find. Knock and the door will be opened unto you. Open your spirit for the gifts of the, the spirit to be manifested in you. You see, when the Holy Ghost is alive in you, the church, it gives relevance and it shows effectiveness of the church. Through the Holy Spirit comes the gift of the Spirit. The gifts are for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, and for the edifying of the body of Christ. The church needs the anointing. The church needs the anointing. The church needs the anointing. And so I say to somebody right now, if you are listening to this teaching as I am finished, I want you to say, Lord, I want to repent before you. I want to confess my sins before you, Lord. I ask you now to wash me from my sins. I'm sorry for the sin that I have committed, Lord. Lord, I'm ready to turn around my life and I surrender my life to you. Then now, you go to a preacher man to have you baptized in water calling on the name of the Lord to bury the old man and to rise to walk in a new life. It's not finished. Then you need the baptism of the Holy Ghost. The oil of God now poured in you. And when the oil comes into you, we hear you speak in tongues. Acts 2 verse 4 as the Spirit of God give you utterance. May God bless you. Trim your lamp. Get the oil going. And let light come back into the world. Into your family. Into your life. I want to ask you to bow your head with me right now. Hallelujah. As I pray that God will accept your repentance. Amen. Right now. In Jesus name. Heavenly Father. I pray Lord. But as that person that tonight, that young man, that young woman, Lord, hallelujah, is confessing before you right now, tears running down the face. I pray, God, that you may accept the confession, heal and deliver, hallelujah. And I pray, God, right now that that person will not just stop there, Lord, but will go to a Bible-believing church. To have them buried in the name of Jesus. To receive the, the, the oil of the Holy Spirit into their lives. So that they can receive, Lord, light, give light. And manifest the gift of the Spirit. May God bless you. May God keep you. It's a pleasure seeing you share with us tonight. And I pray that as you share with us. I'll see you again, God's willing, next week, same place, same time, with another anointed word from the Lord. Thank you so much for sharing. God bless you, in Jesus' name.